up guys it's been a while I've been meaning to do another test on my two-ton bastard water heater now that I have that circulation pump right there plumbed into it so what I've got is I took a couple refrigerant jugs welded them up using them for water storage so this is circulating in and out and look at the water see how the water discolored that's because I made these like a week or so ago and just from sitting with the water, it rusted like that. And that's actually after I flushed it. So, yeah, those are rusting out pretty easy. And since this stupid debacle, you know, with everybody shutting down, hardware stores have been shutting down early and whatnot. Sometimes it's been hard to go get a fitting here or there after work to work on this thing. So today I got another fitting, barbed fitting. And look, see how hard that plastic is? It's because I charged it with city pressure because I want a real test of that pump, make sure it could pump fast enough. So... Looks like my water's already up to 85, if that's reading right. Um, yeah, T1 and T2, those are in the 80s. Uh, that's on refrigerant line, so not on water. So for reading water, um, I've got this one shoved up in here, so it's the leaving water from the tank. So this one right here should give a very quick reading of the actual water temperature of the tank without the delay of reading from the outside of a copper pipe. Okay, there we go. One more meter. That one will read the leaving water temperature with that fluke clamp on. The flukes are probably a little quicker than the testos. Yep. Got a little electronic blower over here. That's what we got. Temperature right there. Oh, did I hook up my speed selector yet? I don't think so. So hopefully that blows enough air. Pulling 0.5 amps. Um, yeah, let's see here. Blower. I'm trying to remember what I did, but basically, uh, there's a, let's see, hot, hot. Where's my, one of those wires I have to run through a rectifier to, for the ECM to change speeds. I just stuck this in the path, and you know, it's an ECM, when you restrict the outlet, it speeds up the uh, fan a little bit, some static pressure. Pulling 0.9 amps now. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and turn this sucker on. It's been like a month since I've ran this thing. Maybe. Cursor's running, 12 amps total. Pressures are being a little weird. But I might have both of these on high side with the port. There we go. So the time started 7.14. 208 over 74. It's pretty low pressure pressure. So that water's definitely probably moving. Being added that water's that warm. Uh, well, again, these are my water temperatures. This is leaving water, 98. And the water in the tank is already up to 92. So shot up a couple degrees. Now remember, this is only going to be like maybe 10 gallons of circulating water. So it should be a pretty quick test here. 220 over 76. Yeah. R22. 11 sub cool. 33 super heat. Water leaving is already over 100. Water in the tank 95. Pressures are doing great. 230 over 78. Super heat's dropping. Supplier 64. Yeah, it was. Closer to 100 degrees today. I don't know what it is now. I forgot to look. I'll look on the app in a second. So I just looked at the app and it said it was 94 degrees. So, makes sense. So, 62 degree supplier is awesome. This supply fan is probably blowing a little slower than the other one was. The blower, you know, for the size of the wheel and everything was made for the uh, three ton unit. It's actually only a two-ton compressor. Still got the two-ton man up here. It's nice. Nice coming out here. Two, six, so we're now at the time 717, so it's been running three minutes. 264 over 85. 62 degrees supply. 60 hertz on the compressor. Total system amp, 15, 15 amps. So that's more than I used to get, it seems. And we got 100, 
seven degree in the tank already. And then leaving water, 114. We've got less than a 10 degree increase, but of course, this one probably going to delay just a pinch, you know, on the outside of the copper. And this probe is in the water. 109, it's going up fast. This thing's kicking ass. So you just look right there. 109, 110, it's just climbing like crazy. 10 gallons of circulating water. It's already gone up from like mid 80s. So, so it's going up pretty quick, 117 leaving. Hopefully all this holds because I'm under like such intense pressure, city pressure. But satisfied with that pump, I think it's moving a pretty good amount of water there. Head pressure is like nothing to worry about yet. It's getting up there though, 288. 87 supply still at 62. So amps are up to 15.9 basically. You can see it's slowly climbing as the pressure climbs. Now to lower the load on this thing, technically, once that water temperature starts getting, I could just slow down the blower. And maybe if it gets starts getting up there a little bit, um, just before shut off, I could pull that thing out to let the fan slow down. Yeah, the water's already up to 116 in the tank, 122 leaving. Uh, discharge of the compressor, 162, nothing to worry about. Amps. Still less than what the uh, heating element would be, and I'm sure it's heating way faster. So 311 over 89. Getting up there, but it's not getting up there. 119. I'm gonna go ahead and let the fan slow down a little bit. And the fan is slowing down. You'll see that supply air, which is right here, drop, and it is. Let's see if it actually corresponds with the high side or not. It's still climbing. So that's 16 plus amps. So I can also slow down the compressor too if I have to. So the tank is already up to 122, 128 even. So I mean, that's already hot enough for normal water heater setting. Already achieved what most people run their water heaters at. So. I mean, that would be, that's our 22. So I mean, that is kind of in the harsh <laughs> area for pressure, but it's not like unseen. Anything with that, you know, had a little bit of air restriction or anything would run that high. Um, it corresponds to 140, so, but if you had like a 120 degree day on a 10 sear unit, that's or more, you know, probably run almost that high. 126, we're already hitting 130. I'm going to go ahead and slow this uh, compressor down too, just to see for shits and giggles. Going down to 50 hertz drops me all the way down under 15 amps there. Pressure still shooting. That's a good test now. These tanks are so small that you know it heated up so quick. You know, get it down. I just want to see if it still heats when I slow it down. Drop the amps down to under 13. 340 over 97. Supply is starting to suffer for it, but it's actually still I think over 20 degrees split right there. Still climbing in tank temperature. Oh, we're over 130 in the tank. 135 leaving. We're already past the target, so we're actually already doing test. Oh, that hose is ready to blow it bust because of the pressure. I didn't even think of that. Look at that. That's why I busted it last time. That's getting ready to explode all over me. <laughs> Man, come on, bleed. I need to shut this sucker off. <laughs> 351 98. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Okay, is the swelling going down yet? I'm bleeding off pressure. I almost blew that. Look at that line getting ready to blow all over me. Oh, this, uh, <laughs> look how swollen that is. Because pr from heating up the water. 133, 134. It ain't. It just blow hot ass water over me. It's done. A little. I'm bleeding off the pressure. Man, 
Whoa. Gonna need an expansion tank. <laughs> Not really. Nah. All right, before I was so rudely interrupted, what time was it? Like, call it a minute ago, 7.21. So it ran seven minutes to heat that water from mid 80s up to 135 almost, 134 right there. That's equalized now. So 134 degree way above what it needed to be. By the way, did you hear the Ford Escape? Freaking exhaust ticks from the freaking stripped out screws on the exhaust manifold. Damn thing. But it, uh, as soon as it heats up after like 20 seconds, it seals itself. So it ain't worth uh, tilting the engine or anything to get to that sucker. I already tried tightening it, but I need to get into the head bolts. Or exhaust bolts going into the heads. It ain't worth nothing. So so blower by itself is running half an amp when I slow it down. So I should probably almost do a test with this thing just running at 40 hertz. But oh well. Anyway, it's a quick test. This is success. Using the poly tube is uh, very risky. I already exploded one on me. It was a thin wall poly tube. I wasn't even thinking, but this feels like a thin wall now. That's three quarter inch tube, and look how fat it is. It's like two inches now. It's swollen. But I just wanted to test my pump to make sure it moved enough water that it was what it was advertised as. And, you know, that ground foss knockoff from Amazon. Brand new, three speeds. So, pretty cool. Anyway, with that, I'm going to go ahead and shut this up. It's getting dark. And I think the next step will be to actually install this thing. I'll put that VFD probably inside there. So, with that, catch you guys later. Don't forget to like and subscribe, suckers.